There are seven rappers who together perfectly represent the seven deadly sins, and I'll be covering them all, starting with the sin of lust. Lust is described as an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. A rapper who embodies lust to the fullest extent is none other than Future. Future is a rapper who's been in the game for over a decade and has become infamous for his toxic nature when it comes to women. She belongs to the streets. The music streaming service title calls him the king of toxic and state that his music ranges from lyrics about infidelity to sexual prowess and pleading to exes that have moved on. Speaking of his exes, Future actually had children with a lot of them, having eight kids in total, with not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight different baby mamas with no marriages involved. A marriage he was involved in is that of NBA legend Scottie Pippen, as Future had a brief relationship with his wife Larsa while they were at a rough point in their marriage. Some speculate that it was the reason for their eventual divorce. Another situation Future is infamous for is when he had an Instagram model fly out to him, then ghosted her after she didn't want to get intimate. He had told her that he wanted to see her and that he'd pay her back a thousand percent of the flight cost when they met up, but after she arrived at the hotel, he told her to wait for him with lingerie on. The woman refused and then asked if she'd still be seeing him at all, to which Future responded with, I'm good love, enjoy. I left her sitting at the laws on, cause she wasn't touching the toes, no. All of Future's lustful infamy led to a trend being created where people place his face over a toxic quote about women. Future's actually embraced this trend, showing off some of the quotes himself during a show. She got all her to do is trying to be the solution. Stand up. It looks like Future has no plans on changing his lustful ways anytime in the near future. Someone who doesn't have a future because they were killed is the rapper I chose to represent the sin of wrath. Wrath is defined as uncontrolled feelings of anger, rage, and even hatred. A perfect match for this description is the rapper King Von. King Von was a rapper from Chicago, Illinois, who's largely considered one of the most influential figures in the drill genre. He was known for his skillful lyricism and storytelling, as well as the aggressive style he delivered it with. He frequently rapped bars involving heinous crimes such as murder, but it was his involvement in crimes away from music that really show off the full capacity of his wrath. Vaughn first started getting involved in local gang politics when he was only in fourth grade and was bringing guns to school by the age of 13. His first run-in with the law came at age 16 when he was charged with armed robbery in 2011, apparently robbing someone for their car at gunpoint. He was arrested again in November of 2012 for shooting at members of the Gangster Disciples, a rival of Vaughn's Black Disciples gang. On April 29th, 2014, Vaughn was arrested and charged with first degree murder and two counts of aggravated assault, but was released the next day due to inconsistencies in the witness statements. Just three months later, Vaughn was charged with one count of first degree murder and two counts of attempted murder in connection with the shooting that killed one and injured two others. He was acquitted of the charges over three years later and was released on December 6th, 2017. Later, in June of 2019, Vaughn and fellow O Block rapper Lil Durk were arrested in connection with the shooting in Atlanta. Prosecutors claim that the two rappers robbed and shot a man outside a popular drive in on February 5th, 2019. After weeks in jail, Durk was released on a $250,000 bond and Vaughn was released on a $300,000 bond. The crimes I've covered so far are just the ones Vaughn was charged for, as after his passing, he was accused of ones even more heinous. In April 2023, the YouTuber Traplore Ross uploaded a four hour long documentary about King Vaughn, calling him rap's first serial killer. The video was filled with evidence linking Vaughn to the murders of at least 10 people, including the murders of P5, Modell, Malcolm Stuckey, and Gakira K.I. Barnes. Chicago authorities actually concluded in 2021 that Vaughn was indeed responsible for the murder of Gakira Barnes. In addition to the 10 murders he was alleged to be the perpetrator of, he was also documented as the mandator to several other gang-related murders. According to the YouTube documentary, Vaughn's primary motive to commit murder was initially a result of gang disputes, but was later being done simply for thrill. All the wrath Vaughn had expelled seemed to have gone full circle, as his own life was taken in similar fashion to how he allegedly took lives via a shooting. King Von was buried on November 14th, 2020 in his home city of Chicago. Another rapper that's from Chicago is the one I selected for the sin of pride. The definition of pride is believing that one is essentially better than others, failing to acknowledge the accomplishments of others, and excessive admiration of the personal self. No rapper fits this description better than that of Kanye West. Kanye is one of the most accomplished artists of all time, and he's notorious for praising himself to the public, causing many to label him as a narcissist with a massive ego. My greatest pain in life is I will never be able to see me. 
perform. He's called himself the greatest artist of all time on multiple occasions, like when he referred to himself as the greatest artist that God has ever existed, uh, created. On the topic of God, Ye has labeled himself as a God multiple times and even has an entire song doing so titled I Am A God. I am a God. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you. That's who I think I am. Ye also has an entire song about himself titled I Love Kanye. Oh, and the album that the song is on, Ye called it the best album of all time. On another song from the same album titled Famous, Kanye takes credit for Taylor Swift's rise to fame, citing his 2009 interruption of her VMA speech as the catalyst for her fame. Kanye had a very similar onstage incident in 2006 after losing out on an EMA award. Oh, hell no. This video costs a million dollars, fam! If I don't win, the award show loses. Credibility. I appreciate it, man. I pre you know, it's nothing against you. I've never seen your video. It's nothing against you. But hell no, nah, man. Ye also has a reputation for constantly delaying music and being late to scheduled events. And continued lateness is actually a showing of pride as it tells those who must wait that their schedules are not a priority. You should be honored by my lateness that I would even show up to this fake shit. Despite Kanye's pride causing him to be labeled as a controversial figure to the masses, he's still one of the biggest artists on the planet with a cult-like fan base that is still constantly growing to this day. Something else that's constantly growing is the discography of the rapper I have representing the sin, gluttony. Gluttony is characterized by a limitless appetite and overindulgence to the point where one is no longer consuming just to live, but rather living to consume. A rapper who expresses gluttony by constantly consuming beats and releasing music is NBA Youngboy. Youngboy is a Louisiana rapper who's infamous for the absurd amount of music he puts out. He started writing and making music at the young age of 14, eventually dropping his first mixtape in April of 2015. Since then, in just an eight year span, Youngboy has released a mind boggling 26 mixtapes, 102 singles, six studio albums, three compilation albums, and three EPs. This caused many to label his music as quantity over quality, as most other artists who make thousands of songs, like Juice World, for example, choose only to release a select few which they consider to be their best, rather than just putting out as much as they can. When asked why he releases so much music, Youngboy said, It's a disease. Literally, I cannot help myself. I tell myself sometimes I'm not gonna drop until months from now, but it's addictive. I wish I knew when I was younger how unhealthy this was for me. The music is therapy, but I can't stop it when I want. In 2022, Youngboy challenged himself to release 10 mixtapes that year, but after 101 songs, including 7 mixtapes, he made a comment saying that he ran out of rhymes and asked for help. He ironically released another project just 10 days after making this comment. While Youngboy's been scrutinized for his addiction to releasing music, it's also helped him become one of the most accomplished rappers in the game. He's constantly at the top of not just rap, but all genre, most streamed lists every year. He became the youngest artist to receive 100 RIA Gold or Platinum certifications at 22 years old, and became the youngest artist to chart 100 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 at 23 years old. The next rapper on my list has the exact opposite work ethic of Youngboy, and that's why the sin they're representing is sloth. Sloth is described as a reluctance to work or make an effort, also known as laziness. A rapper whose career quickly went downhill as a direct result of their sloth is Lil Xan. Lil Xan is a rapper from Redlands, California, who started making music in 2016 to buy a new camera after his had been stolen. Before even starting music, he already had a reputation for being lazy, skipping and failing all of his classes before dropping out freshman year. I got an F in PE and they're like, how the f you fail PE? And I was like, that shit easy, bro. I'm a lazy son of a so I failed every class up until I dropped out freshman year. He wasn't a well-known artist until the release of the music video to his song Betrayed on the Lyrical Lemonade channel in 2017 that completely skyrocketed his career. The video quickly amassed hundreds of millions of views and it seemed like he was bound for a successful career, but it turned out that he was too lazy to capitalize off of his newfound success. He failed to show up to numerous meetings with other big rappers, giving him an opportunity that could have greatly boosted his career. Oh, he kept right. missing the meetings. When he released his debut album in 2018, it was met with overwhelmingly negative reviews, as it was pretty obvious that he put little effort into the project. I remember when Lil Xan's album came out, right? And I remember having a conversation with, with Stat and being like, what do you think of the album? Because it was pretty obvious that the album was bad and that he didn't put any effort into it. Zan put in like no work for the album. If it was up to Stat, Zan would have been sitting in the studio recording every 
every night and instead he was just doing drugs and having random ass girls come over every night. In 2019, he was set to join Nicki Minaj and Juice World on their month long tour, but ended up only performing for one single show. I remember that he was supposed to be on the whole tour and then he was only on it for like a week because he was tweaking out. They could never get Zan to do the shit that yeah. he actually had to do for his career. For a time, Lil Zan expressed his desire to quit rapping and just become a public figure. So that's why I'm not doing music. Like after I finished my contract with Columbia, I didn't sign up. Like I didn't know what I was signing up for. I'm more of a, a, a celebrity than a, than a rapper at this point. So that's why I'm quitting rapping. After all these years since 2018, he still hasn't released a second album, constantly giving contradictory statements about a release. He initially planned on releasing an album titled Be Safe in 2019, but the album entered production limbo and was eventually scrapped. In November 2019, he announced his next album would be titled When September Ends and even showed off an album cover for it, but this also never saw a release. In January 2020, Zan announced that his album was finished and that it would be called Sorry I Didn't Quit. He once again revealed the album's cover and also its track list, but like usual, he didn't follow through and the album never released. It took him almost four years since 2018 just to release another project, which was a measly five song collab EP. Due to his own actions, Lil Xan's career in the spotlight had almost no longevity, which is something that cannot at all be said about the rapper I selected for the sin of envy. Envy is defined as jealousy over the blessings and achievements of others. A rapper that has been seen expressing these envious attributes on numerous occasions is Nicki Minaj. Nicki is widely considered to be one of the greatest rappers of all time, as she was the top-selling female rapper of the 2010s. Her massive success did not come without a fair share of controversy, as she's been the perpetrator of multiple feuds with other artists stemming from jealousy. Funnily enough, Nicki's journey in rap actually all began from jealousy, as her whole reason for writing her first raps was because her neighbor was a rapper and she wanted to show that she was better. I was like 11 and I wanted to like, I wanted to show the girl next door because she was like a good rapper and she thought she was so much better than me. So when she was, when she left, I went home and I wrote this little rap so I can like show her. And then I went, I rang her bell and I started saying my rap and she just stood there like, Nicki's most infamous example of envy came when rapper Cardi B stepped onto the scene. Many believe that Nicki saw Cardi as a threat to her spot as the top female rapper and was jealous of the attention she was getting. According to Cardi and the evidence that backs her up, Nicki sneak dissed her, lied about her, and even threatened other artists to not work with her, all in hopes to crush her success. In 2018, when Travis Scott's Astroworld album was number one in its second week over her new album in its first week, Nicki was furious and instantly went to calling Travis names and discrediting his placement at number one. Whole nigga of the week, of course, is Travis Scott. But what we not gonna do is have this auto tool man coming up here selling sweaters and telling y'all he sold half a million albums because he didn't. She simply could not accept the fact that his album was charted over hers. Earlier in 2023, Nicki got into a back and forth Twitter feud with City Girls rapper Young Miami over her using the wording got into some things, which is something Nicki frequently says on her radio show. Young Miami said she definitely didn't get that slang from her, and she reportedly thinks the real reason Nicki called her out is because she was jealous of Young Miami's Carisha Please show because her queen radio show wasn't getting the same level of buzz on social media. Someone else who's been getting buzz on social media for their portrayal as a scammer is the rapper I picked to represent the sin, Greed. Greed is described as a selfish and excessive desire to acquire something usually pertaining to material wealth. A rapper whose whole identity is built off of the ideas of greed is Punch Made Dev. Dev initially became known in 2015 for being a YouTuber who would play NBA 2K. Even as a YouTuber, Dev was already showing his scamming ways, making fake videos about other top 2K creators for views. You heard Pretty But Fredo, right? He's the biggest one out of everybody. So what I did was I was trying to finesse. I made a fake video on him. And I posted it and said I beat him. And he made a video. This nigga's about damn near Christ. Like, this is not me in the video. He did not play me. This is a clone. This is a fake. It's a clone. It, it, it it's was a fake. fake. I base game. It was fake. <laughs> I just did it for the views. He decided to make a switch to music in 2017 after being unsatisfied with NBA 2K's latest game and wanting a more lucrative career. At first, I did YouTube videos. I didn't see YouTube like, I didn't see it making me like a million dollars. I want to be a millionaire, so I was like, I gotta do something different. And then also 2K18 came out, and that game was just ass. I was like, I'm not doing it. You want to switch kind of... over to music? He started by making typical rap music, but a couple years later, on November 19th, 2019, he uploaded his first song in the genre known as Scam Rap. 
Scam rap is a hip hop subgenre characterized by lyrics that focus on various forms of fraudulent activities. All of Dev's songs from this point on were of the scam rap genre, including some full tutorials on how to pull off certain scams. Listen up, I'm finna show y'all how to hit a bank. Just pay attention, this is a quick way to jug in any state. He changed his rap name to Punch Made Dev in 2021, with the term punch referring to stolen credit card numbers. He claims to really be scamming people as well, not just in his music, and he's shown himself doing it too. So as far as scamming goes, are you feeling like your NBA level scammer? Oh, I'm, I'm like LeBron of the scammer and Michael Jordan combined. See, I got their balance right there, 430K. I'm about to wire that to this account that I got my hands on. Thank you. 310. Let me sniff. All right, so now I got the numbers plugged in. I'm about to run this through. So now I just wrote somebody else's info right here. A big wave right now is Cash App. This one's going crazy. Do 55 eight. So 55,000. Literally that simple. And how did you do that? Gotta pay for the size, man. Dev sells a course on Telegram, claiming to teach others how to scam like himself. He's reportedly been arrested for scamming, but continues to do so regardless. Some people think that what he's saying and doing is all fake and just to promote his course, and even if that is true, that in itself would still be considered a scam.